ba 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 my name is Dirk. It is Dirk Weekdays. Welcome, everybody, to your Thursday dose of bashers. So good to see you all. Let's see who's in the room. Everybody's very quiet. Well, today is the day that we're giving away a Mirage watch roll. That's right, a Mirage watch roll. And it's this one. Beautiful, huh? Open it up. It's in its beautiful velvet pouch. Is my volume loud enough? I can make it loud. Let me make it a little bit louder. A little bit louder now. 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 Okay, so here we go. Watch roll. You know what it looks like. It looks like this. And I have the beautiful Seiko that Tobster gifted to me. Residing in its its little pouch looks great in there. Your watch will look just as good, if not better, depending on what you got. I think this looks really good in there. It's blue and beautiful. Um, so this is what you'll be getting, and that'll be at the end of the show. And the terms of the uh, giveaway are one: be a subscriber. Uh, you know, trying to get it, trying to get that algorithm going, trying to get everybody, uh, liked and subscribed, please like, and subscribe. Um, if you are the winner and you're not a subscriber, number two gets it. Um, and basically what's going to happen is I'm going to talk like I do. And at the end of the show, I'm going to mention something that I talked about earlier in the broadcast. So the per first person to come up with the correct answer is going to be the winner. Brand new, beautiful. Leather watch roll in a beautiful dust bag. Absolutely beautiful. Will be yours. Just know the answer and be a subscriber to Bashers. Those are the rules. That's all I got. Andrew Wolkowicz says, unfortunately, I'm working till 530. Good luck to all. Give an upvote and subscribe. Namaste. He is the official cheerleader and or mascot of this channel. And for that, we're going to give him a gong, bang, a gong, get it on. Thank you so much, Andrew, for that. Who else we have in the room? We have Dean's in the room. Let's get ready to bash. Hitesh, she's here. Hey, up photo. Oh, you got, he got Laverne's card today. I'm, I'm glad you got one. And thank you. Thank you for your concern and your love and all the support to everyone who, uh, you know, who offered me uh, comfort in uh, the worst part of my adult life. Um, yesterday, she was gone a month. A month. It's hard for me to believe. A month. March 17th. St. Patrick's Day. It's supposed to be a big day for Irish people, but I don't give a shit. It's and it's certainly not going to be a very good day for me for the rest of my life. Chili Badger's here. Hello, freaks. Jay's here. Hey, good to see you. Nick Sisto. Nick Sisto. Good. Hey, Dirk. Good evening, all. Melly C. Great to see you. Hope you're well too. Very my very much so. Nathaniel. Nathaniel Hannon on B A S H E R S. Um, it should be like a four part harmony, but like a minor second, like that great white harmonies that don't exist anymore. If you watch the 40s, 30s, 40s, 50s, all these great, very white sounding um, uh, harmonies were fantastic. The high lows, the swingle singers, the swingle singers, <laughs> swingle singers, like I'm Yiddish. It was the swingle singers. <laughs> um, yeah, that sound, I don't know why, I love that sound. Um, you know, it got replaced by the quote-unquote soul sound, the the black sound of R&B from the late 50s, early 60s, and that's just kind of all you get now. Whereas, like, the harmonies, like Manhattan Transfer, stuff like that, there's still a couple of groups around still doing that kind of stuff, but not much, and it's a great sound. Uh, one of these days, I always talked about doing a record that had that kind of harmony on it. If you don't know who the high lows are, you should check them out. And it's H I dash L O apostrophe S, the high lows. And they were like a four man um, harmony group. And they would show up on, you know, the Andy Williams show, the Perry Como show, and all these shows from yesteryear. And, you know, when entertainment was light and entertaining <laughs> and all that stuff. Ray Ray's here. He says, myself, oh, I didn't give you a big bang. There you go. I'm going to give you, you love the triangle, right? Nathaniel's stuck in traffic, so that means he's listening on the radio. Oh, on 
on the radio. And I love that because I, I love listening to podcasts and stuff. Just audio only. It's great. It just kind of takes you out of your loop. That's why I'm in love with audiobooks. So speaking of audiobooks, very interesting. Um, I am now like rereading via audiobooks a lot of books that I already read, like Life by Keith Richards, which was a fantastic fantastic book and i'm not even a big stones fan by any stretch of the imagination i'm just you know i like a lot of their songs uh but it's not a band i followed i saw them live once a million years ago uh it's just not not my thing but i get it you know i'm not going to detract from the rolling stones how could i pioneers and a lot of stuff a lot of bands sound like them a lot of bands copied them anyway this band this book life is uh the forward is read by keith richards and the uh book which is really interesting because I tend to listen to these books at night. You know, I could put, put the phone on my pillow and uh, listen to it until I fall asleep. Then I have to backtrack and go, what happened? What happened? Um, so Johnny Depp reads the book and he's very, very good. Uh, and then I woke up and all of a sudden he's doing this really, really kind of East End accent, you know, real kind of like that. You know, skis over here and, you know, governor, a heat of governor and all that. All, all, all really, really hardcore British and really East End. And I'm like, wow, that's why would he go start out sounding like Johnny Depp and then slowly morph into an accent that's not even Keith Richards? And it turns out, I looked it up. He doesn't read the whole book. This other guy does. Uh, Joe, I forget his name off the top of my head, but like the book and then Johnny Depp comes back later on. I'm like, couldn't they contract Johnny to do the whole book or did that whole, you know, did his whole court battle start then? <laughs> Was he unavailable to finish the book? Cause those things take a long time. Those, those audio, I mean, you got to read an entire book and then there's probably a lot of takes. There's probably a lot of, you know, cutting room floor because uh, you know, you have to read it. And the way Johnny Depp does it, I have to say better than most is, he acts the stories out and he's really great. He goes, and, uh, you know, and, uh, we met this guy and we got on a boat and the guy said, wait right there. And I, I trembled thinking that the police were arriving because we had two kilos of heroin on us. And, uh, it's really well done. It's otherwise it could have been, well, we met this guy and, uh, we were getting on the boat and then we saw, uh, a, a guy who we thought was the cop and we had two kilos of heroin on us. I mean, it's all about storytelling and Johnny Depp's really good. And then this British guy who I thought was Johnny Depp doing a British accent is stupendous. So if you haven't read or listened to uh, Keith Richards book, it's fantastic. Angelo Minichello, our favorite heart star. Good evening. Dork. I like the way you spelt that. Maybe that, that should be my next solo record. D-8-R-K. I like that. It's pretty cool. Dave Fahrenheit 451 says, I hope Miss Martin is coping with any and all of her issues. It's an issue regarding a friend. I don't want to go into details because, you know, she's a private lady and let's keep it at that. Uh, and we have a new person on the show, Dr. LK Lord dot knob head dot head two. <laughs> well, hello to you. Hey, Dean, Dean, it's a dancing machine. One pound 99 super sticker. Thank you, Dean. Uh, Hans Niesenthal is here. He says, good evening, Dirk Meister. Good evening to you, Hans. Chili Badger says, hello, so lazy, hazy, daisy, handsy, hands. Good to see everybody in the room. Uh, Hans also says that today was full of Frankie Beverly and Maze, joy and pain, Ike, sunshine and rain. I don't know what that means, but it sounds very good. Frankie Beverly and Maze, join in pain like sunshine and rain. Is that a great lyric from, from something I'm unaware of? Or you'll remind me and I'll go, clunk. What an idiot. Could very well, very well be. Enjoying a delicious cup of Julius Meinl coffee that uh, I'm now addicted to because the beautiful Michaela de Chatillon turned me on to it because she's a cafe house expert. And she turned me on to that coffee, and it's just absolutely marvelous. One of my absolute favorites. Hans Niesenthal says it's 80s dance. 
who's, who's name the song, name the artist. So we have a clue as to who that is, because I have no idea at all. Andy Dufresne says, Guten Abend from Wien, from Vienna. I told you that funny story about when my band was touring and we, we got to uh, to Austria and they they saw the sign outside and they're like, what's O-S-T-E-R-E-C-H-T? What does that mean? And I was like, it means Austria. <laughs> like, I thought we we're playing Vienna. This is Wien. <laughs> I won't say which guy in the band said that, but one of them did. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Tom Voss is in the house. Ray Ray says, hey, Dirk, it's okay. I didn't give anything away in the earlier chat. Were we chatting earlier? What, did, what could you have given away? I've got a giveaway. It's the beautiful Mirage case that's being given away to one of you beautiful lovelies. The rules are, and I'm going to say this throughout the show. Here's the rules. I'm trying to make the channel blow up. So I have a career here. <laughs> Who cares? I want a career. Mirage, Watro, in beautiful leather, in a beautiful dust bag, could be yours. I'm going to, the, the, all you got to do is answer a question. It's going to be something I said earlier in the show. I don't know when. I'm going to choose it when I say it. I'm going to go, well, that's good. I'm going to go to myself inside my head. I'm going to go, that's good. I'm going to say that. That's going to be the question. And you just have to be a subscriber. So if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button now. This way you won't lose out on the on the Mirage box. Because if you're not, it goes to the next one in. Because I'm going to check. I'm going to know. I'm going to know. Del Boy ZA says, howdy. Howdy to you. I finally got to check in with the big guy today. After his long trip to the beautiful town of Geneva. And, uh, you know, we talk on the phone like 14-year-old uh, girls, and we hadn't in quite a while because he was busy, busy, busy. Train journeys, long, 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 lots of stories. Uh, all in all, you know, had a good time. A lot of good food, some good drinks, some good fun friendships, meeting people and spending time. Isn't that the be best thing in the whole wide world? Isn't travel just the greatest it can, you could just be going 20 miles away, 40, 50 miles away. But when you go to another country and you meet up with people and you, you sightsee, you go to restaurants. I don't know if you guys watched yesterday's stream on his channel, but uh, it was in Milano, one of my absolute favorite places. I love to stay at the Principe di Savoia. Uh, my favorite hotel in Milan. And I love uh, the Campari bar that's right uh, inside the gallery. It's right on the, on the gallery corner. It's in the building. It's just on the, it's, you know, like right before the big arch, you go in there. And it's one of my favorite places. I remember taking my niece Shay there. Uh, and I always, there's a big department store there called La Rinascente. La Rinascente. And I always get my, I, I wear these, I don't have it here. I wear, I'm a cross body bag guy. I, I have one of those cross body bags. I always have one. And um, most of them I've gotten there when, when it's time, when it's wearing out and mine, mine currently is a, got a, what do you call those things that hikers use? Uh, uh, I always forget the name of it. It's a uh, carabiner. I have a carabiner currently holding my strap on cause it snapped. I've had it for several years and I love it. It was a gift from the O'Malley's. At Christmas time, and it's beautiful. And that's one of the very few that I didn't get at La Lina Shente. So it's telling me that I need to take a trip this year to Italia to and stop in Milan, which isn't hard to do because I could fly in there. Milan is a big, big embarkation place. Um, departures and arrivals. Uh, and go to La Lina Shente. And also have lunch up on the... The, uh, the outdoor terrace, which is really, 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 really lovely because uh, it sits right across the street from the Duomo. So you sit there and you get to see all the flying buttresses and all that stuff. And it's really, really, really super cool. Um, but I really enjoyed that. They went in there and I was trying to tell him to get the compadre, not a drink I would drink because it has, um, it's a Negroni compadre. And in that drink, it is a Negroni but it has like a, like a smoky flavor because they put mezcal in it. Now, I don't know about you guys, but <clears throat> as you know, I'm not a hard liquor drinker. Um, but if I was to drink hard liquor, I would definitely not be drinking mezcal because it tastes like an ashtray. 
uh yuck but uh i love the way it smells though it smells really really smoky so if you enjoy that flavor i think you'd enjoy that a lot so it is you know um uh, uh three part uh, a part one part uh campari one part uh mezcal and uh one part uh Oh, actually, I got to look that recipe up now that I'm thinking about it because they probably changed it. It's probably not a regular Negroni. I was going to say, and one part sweet vermouth, but I think, I think, I think they just swap that out, and then they use like a, a um, what do you call it? an a, a atomizer, a vaporosteur, to uh, blow some kind of fragrance, a bergamot. They put bergamot on the top with like a perfume uh, atomizer. Um, and it's very popular there. And I think Paul had it last time. He said it was fantastic. You know. Uh, Velvé. Bonjour, Velvé. 789 says the flying buttresses in, buttresses in Rome are outstanding. I mean, listen, flying buttresses in all those arch gothic architectures and all those beautiful old cathedrals. It's mesmerizing. The most beautiful ones, I have to admit, um, my favorite church I think I've told you guys is St. Coleman's in Cove in in uh, Cork, Ireland. It's my favorite church on the planet that I've seen. I mean, I've been to the Vatican and that's obviously in a world by itself. Um, but I think the most beautiful example of flying buttresses I ever saw was at the cathedral in Spain. And I'm going to pull it up. Uh, and we were there for a day. Hold on. Uh, flying... Okay, I'll just write cathedral. Oh, let's see what it is. Here it is. I'll pull it up because this was fucking magnificent. If I do say myself, uh, we 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 were visiting my friend Mary in the south of Portugal, and. Um, we decided to drive up to uh, Seville for the day. And uh, man, it was absolutely incredible. That town, Spain, I have a hard time eating in Spain because it's so meat-centric, it's so steak-centric. Um, they have a lot of other stuff. But um, this place, there's not so many great pictures of the buttresses. Well, there's one. Okay, let me pull that up. Uh, this cathedral in Sevilla was absolutely incredible. Let me pop it up. Let's pop it up. This place was absolutely beautiful. Uh, there were more buttresses than that. I remember you could take a tour, but we were there for one day. We drove into town, uh, had lunch, uh, saw the King Alphonse Hotel, which is very swanky. And, um... I remember it had this like checkerboard black and white floor and uh, I think it was part of the luxury collection, but it was like the fanciest joint down the King Alphonse. And uh, we went across to have a coffee, which was absolutely outstanding as is most coffee in Europe. And then we went and we toured this um, beautiful cathedral, but we didn't go on the roof tour, which was available and we didn't do it. And I wish we did. One of these days I'll get back there. I was not a long time ago. I'm going to say it was mm, 99. It was now, now that I think about it, because my friend Mary just turned 90. She's a, uh, she was a customer at my old bar and uh, she just turned 90, 90 years young. And I haven't seen her in years because she's mad at me because uh, for, I don't know, I cut her off one day. She's drinking too much. Um, Del Boy says that the mezcal substitutes the gin. It does, yeah. You remove the gin and you just you just swap it out with that. So it's uh, one part sweet vermouth, one part uh, mezcal, one part Campari, then a big a big uh, atomizer, three puffs of uh, bergamot. Uh, yeah, so that's what it is. Uh, Andy says, two crazy Mexicans introduced me to mezcal in Chicago. What a night. And Han says, and you remembered? How could you remember that? I don't know how anybody could remember that. Uh, Negro I love something called a Negroni Sbagliato. And that is a delicious drink where you take the gin out and you put either Franciacorda or Prosecco. 
Uh, Fr Francia Corda is the, you know, champagne, the method champenois of Italia. And it's delicious. I like it a lot. I mean, I used to love champagne. And I don't know. Every time I would get on a flight, I would stop at, uh, um, um, in the airport, there's a bar there in the American Airlines terminal. We would always go in there and have a, a split of Piper Heidsack before the flight. It's kind of like, I'm not going to say I'm not going to do it now, but, um, I just don't have the same taste. I've had like two bottles of champagne sitting in my refrigerator for like two years and I haven't been tempted to open them, not even on new year's. So I don't know what it is if I lost my taste for champagne or I used to love drinking champagne. And now I don't know. It just, it's first of all, it's the best buzz in the world. Two glasses of champagne. If you could just keep the two champagne glass buzz forever, it would be the greatest thing. Cause it's the greatest buzz in the whole wide world. However, you get a headache after two glasses. It just happens. And I don't care if it's Krug or Le Grand Dame or Cristal or whatever your favorite vintage and, and mark of, of champagne. They're all the same. They all give you a headache. I don't like them. I don't like them. Oh, hey, Ray Ray. Uh, concur. Worked out of Cove for, uh, I like how you spelt it. You didn't spell it the Irish way. Cove. It's for the punters, right? <laughs> Uh, because Cove is spelled, you, you know, it's very Irishy. It's it's it doesn't look like that. I'll tell you that much. Uh, Toussaint Lou says my favorite church was Notre Dame in Nice. What a vibe! I've never been to Nice. I know, right? I've never been to the south of France. I'm missing out, right? Uh, south of France has got all those, you know, like the Hotel du Cap and all those beautiful cities. I'd love to see Monte Carlo. Um, I think I would feel like a fraud if I went to Monte Carlo. I think you have to be like a billionaire to go there. I know that they don't pay taxes, which is interesting because how do they run their city? Because how do you run a city without taxes? And everybody there is rich, so it shouldn't be a problem to be taxed. Uh, so does anybody know how that how it works in uh, Monaco? How do they how do they how do they fix a pothole or a traffic light or, you know, how do they fix anything? How does that work? I don't know. Um, as far as Notre Dame goes, as beautiful as it is in Paris, and I'm so happy to see that it's, you know, it's a phoenix rising. Now they have the, the rooster on the top is now a rooster phoenix, which is beautiful. I've been following the construction of that forever and ever and ever, and it's I'm so happy to see it coming back to where it belongs. And I'm happy to see that it was, it was uh, not, they didn't take money out of taxpayers. It was all privately funded, which is really beautiful. Um, you know, because you could use that money for, you know, people who need to eat and things like that. Um, but I always thought that the more beautiful church in uh, in Paris was Sacré-Cœur uh, in Montmartre. I always thought that that was w far more beautiful. I just like it better. I think Notre Dame always look unfinished because the front of it looks like it's missing. You know, like they like they. They like Sagrada Familia in in, uh, in Barcelona. You know, they've been working on it forever. Notre Dame's been finished forever. It always looks unfinished to me, but that's just Gothic Gothic architecture fee. You never know. You know, Hans Niesentes says he loves Vienna. I love Vienna too. I, I've only been there the one time I played. Um... <laughs> so I'll tell you. So this was our first European tour, and uh, you know, was we we were on a package tour. It was us and two other bands and they were uh, a band called Sergeant Fury and a band called Skew Siskin. And I had not heard of either bands, but they were somewhat popular. One band, Skew Siskin, had been around for quite a long time and they had a singer named Nina. And uh, this other band was a German band from, uh, well, they were, I think that they were from Frankfurt. Uh, and they were called Sergeant Fury. And man, they were fantastic. And they were great dudes. And they had this amazing singer named Mac. And he was from uh, he was from Manchester. And he was a lovely guy. And I say was because he's passed away. He was a big time drinker. And uh, halfway in the middle of the tour, uh, their manager came up to us and said, um, you guys, can you, do you guys have more songs? And we're like, yeah, why? And they're like, we need another like 35, 40 minutes out of you guys. And we were like, why? They said, well, Mac lost his voice. And I was like, it was no doubt he lost his voice. He was chain smoking, smoking weed, drinking, like getting hammered every single night. Anyway, the guy was a magnificent singer. 
Uh, but he partied too hard. And then he got his voice back after, I think, I think we did four or five shows where they didn't play, which is kind of shitty. Uh, but then he came back and he was better than ever. And he finished the tour out and it was great. So we played, uh, we played in some, some nice venues. Um, but the one we played in Vienna, I re- I'll never forget this. It was subterranean. And uh, we, you know, we loaded the, the crew, loaded the gear in and we get to this thing. We go down many, many flights of stairs and trying to figure it out. And this is club. It's very dark. It wasn't very big, maybe held like three, 400 people. And there was a door all the way in the back with like painted glass. And uh, I opened it and I was inside the Viennese subway. <laughs> there was a door in the club that opened out into the a hallway of the subway system, which was fantastic. And uh, I was like, cause I love riding the rails and um, especially when I'm, I was ever been on the road, I love to just go off on my own and daydream and look around and take pictures and things like that. So I just got on the train and went and saw Vienna, went to Bosendorfer and uh, saw all the big sites. I thought Vienna was just absolutely beautiful. Uh, Dean says that Milan looks like a stunning place to visit from watching machines. Love. Oh, it's a mesmerizing place. I was kind of hoping he wasn't paying attention to the chats because he was on his phone. I wanted him to show the gang. Um, if he had just gone through the gallery all the way down and then to the left, he would have been at La Scala, which is the premier opera house of the world. You know, you've heard of the Met and all that, and that's all very important. But the, the the most important opera house in the world is inarguably La Scala. That is that is made and made and broken many uh, uh, an opera singer, especially the coloraturas, the great divas. Their debut at La Scala is the most prestigious thing that could possibly happen to an opera singer. When you are told that you are performing at La Scala, it's the biggest thing. And he was literally like that that Campari bar that he was he was in. If you went all the way through the gallery and came out the other side, it's just to the left there. And that would have been really cool. I would have enjoyed it. Uh, Kelly O'Neill. Hello, Kelly O'Neill. Spelt like Ryan O'Neill, because you don't see O'Neill spelt like that very often. Smashing. Uh, yeah, I always hear, uh, Ultravox, oh, Vienna, Midger, love Midger, love Ultravox. Uh, Dave, no, she just turned 90 now. This, she will be 90 in November of this year. Talk about my friend, Mary. Uh, she, I guess this is 1999, so do the math. No, and she's always been so young. She owns jazz clubs and, uh, she drove a Ferrari. She's like this very wealthy lady that lived in the, like, top floor of the building where I worked and she's just, we became fast friends because of music and she turned me on to a lot of music. I would have never known otherwise some jazz related stuff. Cause I was never big into jazz and she turned me on to like amazing records that I'll never forget. And she knew everybody. I mean, you, you name it. She knew everybody. And, uh, her husband apparently was some big wig at Boeing like on the design team, like he was the the guy that brought the talent in. So that's why they were so wealthy. But she had a villa in Portugal in a place called Quinto do Lago, which is, you know, in the, deep in the Algarve. So she had this, she rent, she, before we got there, she went to, and rented us a car and she goes, she hands us the keys. She goes, all right, it's your car. Go do what you want. And we drove to Spain and that's what we did. Um, it's horrible. Uh, hand says Krug over DP. You know, I got to tell you something. One year about, eh, God, it's probably five years ago. I can't even believe I'm saying this. It's more than that. Uh, my friends, uh, Diane and Chris, um, had a bottle of Krug and I had a bottle of DP and we said, let's get together. So what do we do? We chilled them. We got the glasses ready and we a would them and man, Krug. Krug destroyed it. I have to say it was lighter. It was, it was the bubbles were, it was just, it was outrageous. I have to say, and I've always thought, cause I tried Cristal and I didn't like it. I thought it was a little sweet and a little tart and it wasn't the profile I like. If I like champagne, I generally tend to like, uh, I love Le Grand Dame and you know, I don't like stuff like Veuve Clicquot. I know that's the same brand as Le Grand Dame, but it's a different animal altogether. It's like Tudor and Rolex. You know, it's made by the same company, but it's, you know, 
it is what it is. Um, I've always loved Dom Perignon, and it's only it only comes out vintage. And you know, if, they, if it's not a good year, they don't put it out. And I've always thought it was excellent. And then I that was the the first time I had ever tried Krug, and I have to say, it was magnificent. There is no doubt in my mind; it was fantastic. Uh, Kelly says, "Good luck to everybody in the giveaway." Yes, indeedy. See if I'm not missing anybody. Let's see, make sure everybody's in the room. How many are in the room? 68. Okay, that's good. Remember, I'm just going to mention something. Something in the giveaway. This could be yours. And remember, this is what it looks like. It's or it's you know it's nice and packed and it's in its dust bag and it's beautiful and brand new. This is mine. I have two. I have two. My Milgauss goes in the green one. That's why it looks invisible. Uh, and this, I have my beautiful Tobster Blue Seiko in the, in the black one. And this is the exact same one you get. It's got beautiful Alcantara lined like a Ferrari or a Maserati. It's absolutely beautiful. And it can be yours. You just have to be a subscriber. Those are the rules. You have to be a subscriber. So please like and subscribe. And um, you just have to know the answer to the question, which will be something that I talked about already. And it's that simple. Very, very, very simple. Uh, yeah. So let's see. Uh, Hans Niesenthal says, great music haunts there. Yeah. Oh, brilliant jazz bars. Yeah, I've heard that about that. I've heard that about uh, Vienna. Of course, I was doing metal, so I don't know if there was any brilliant things <laughs> going on. It's a lot of loud stuff. Now that I'm partway deaf, uh, which is crazy town. Uh, Oh, Des Farrell says that Antibes is nicest. I've heard so many things about Antibes, man. I would really like, like the south of France. I really have to get there. When I was a kid, it seemed like a lot of movies, uh, a lot of uh, movies were set in Antibes. So I don't know. New guy to the channel, Dr. LK Lord Knobhead 2 says, my younger brother is Dr. Underscore LK. He is nasty. <laughs> is he? He leaves bad messages on streams. Oh, well, that's not nice. This is a nice show, so we don't do that. We don't do that here. We we, we all try to be better people, you know? Uh, hey, Steve Moreno, good to see you in the chat. Who charges now? Tell us who. Who charges now? Who? Who? Who charges tourists now? Oh, I know. Uh, uh, I don't mind a tourist tax. I certainly like it for Venice because, you know, that's my favorite place on the planet Earth. Um, uh, I just, I've seen it at its best and I've seen it at its worst. And I think sometimes, you know what, you get rid of a little bit of the riffraff if they don't want to pay the five euros or whatever stupid, it's a very small amount of money. It's just an entry fee to get in. If you get into the train station or at the airport, they're going to just put that into your ticket or whatever. And I'm glad those stupid cruise ships are gone because I mean, one, that's a, a museum that's floating in the middle of, of the a lagoon in the Adriatic sea and uh, it's delicate and it needs a balance. And those, you know, the, those ships, what they've done, it's not even believable. And, you know, I'm very involved. With the I'm not, I'm peripherally involved with the SS United States. So I've had to sit through a lot of things about, uh, you know, this displacement of water and what engines do. And, you know, especially that is not a deep body of water. You know, like if you drown in the lagoon, you're, you can't swim because it's not that deep. It's not so bad. And those things, they're big, man. They had these giant, you know, you know what cruise ships look like now? Cruise ships look like Hilton hotels floating on water. They don't look like ships anymore. There's so much superstructure above the hull that it's like you got a hull and then you have like 25 floors with a slide and a roller coaster and all this stupid shit. Just go to an amusement park. I have zero zero interest in going to uh going on a cruise ship maybe across uh across a transatlantic voyage my sister and paul have done that um my nephew doesn't fly so they whenever they go to europe they take either the qe2 or the queen victoria now they could take the queen mary too um and they have and they say that's beautiful because it's elegant and stately. And it's yes, there are superstructures on them, but they're not, they're not, they don't look like any of those carnival cruise lines or the MSC or any of those brands that just have way too much shit. Those things are too big. Plus, don't hit an iceberg. 
<clears throat> Melly C says, I have a bottle of Vuv in my fridge, been in my fridge for 10 years. You know, I had a bottle of Vuv in my refrigerator for almost 10 years, and I recently opened it. And you ready for this? You want to know what I did with it? I cooked with it. <laughs> because champagne, remember, vintage champagne, when you buy it, it was stored in a cave or and somebody was turning the bottle. Champagne is technically meant to drink now it's not bordeaux it's not it's not meant to be held for years and years and years it can be in some instances like i had a 1989 bottle of le grand dame uh for our anniversary um about 10 years ago and uh it was in my my friend's wine cave he owns a wine store he has amazing storage and it was absolutely magnificent it really was great when we opened it up uh, it we poured it and it was very rust colored and then in like 30 seconds you saw the bubbles lift the color out and it became this absolute straw golden and it was beautiful but in in general terms champagne is meant to be drunk now and um Vuv Clicquot is not meant to be stored so you should you know what I did with that I um I made uh I was sauteing garlic and onion and tomato and uh i put some champagne in there and then i sauteed that more than i added broccoli rob and then i put some more champagne in there and um then i used then i made a champagne vinaigrette i put a cork on it and i just started using it for food because i was never going to drink that i was just never going to drink it but anyway ray ray there you go c-o-b-h that's how you spell cove in irish my friends gambling that's my sister carrie kennedy uh what do you mean by gambling carrie gambling 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 oh gambling on the ships oh yeah 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 well you you knew she's she's been on many a transatlantic voyage that's the only thing i would want to do is a transatlantic voyage I, I couldn't imagine doing anything else uh there's two police for every citizen in monte carlo how interesting oh and on the plus side they also let you in wearing shorts now no oh yeah Oh, that's on the cruise ships, right? <sighs> Listen, you guys know how I feel because I'm a, I'm one of the members of the Watch Fashion Police, and I was talking about how I, I saw a lot of people on camera that just looked like slobs, and you're going to this luxury watch collection. You know, these people who are working for all these watch companies are dressed to the nines, women in beautiful suits and pencil skirts and high heels and gentlemen wearing, you know, Laura Piano fabrics and, and uh, Xenia and... and and all these Brioni, all of these Cuccinelli, all this great stuff. You see all these people dressed to the nuts. You know that they smell good. They look good. They, they have fantastic. Then you had all these guys in baggy shirts and weird shorts. Ugh, sneakers, sneakers, sneakers. Don't wear sneakers are never formal wear. They don't look cool with suits. They don't. And uh, I saw all these idiots walking around wearing like Gucci sneakers. Wearing a Gucci sneaker. Gucci sneakers is like wearing a Gucci watch. Don't do that. Those sneakers were made by a three-year-old in Cambodia. Sneakers cost about 55 cents to make no matter what brand they are. I don't care. Nike, Adidas, any of those brands at all. The Gucci and Fendi sneakers. They, people think they're dressed up. You see people on planes with shorts and sneakers all the time. I understand if you're in the back of the bus and it's hot and you feel like you're going to be dying. But like, you know, listen. Because I'm a privileged little twat, and my because of my daddy, I got to fly first class almost my entire life. You know, I we had to wear suits. You know, we were required to wear you know a suit and tie and a jacket because we were representing the airline, so to speak. The customers didn't know that, but it was one of the rules. And then they relaxed the rules, and um, we'd be waiting. We were called non revs, so we would be sitting around waiting you know you have to wait around to see if there's room then it got really good at the end because i could see how many seats were available in first or business or whatever so i would always know if we were going to get in or not and if we weren't going to get in i'd probably reroute us through a different flight but i i one time i met this girl i was with my niece and um we were trying to get on a flight i believe it was a london flight and there was this girl there and she had cut off jean shorts uh flip-flops and a knapsack knapsacks don't get me started on knapsacks people who are traveling buy yourself a beautiful valise or something that rolls because you don't realize that there's another foot behind you when you have a backpack on so when you turn this way or that way you bang into people it's just the most annoying thing and it also looks really sloppy there's no such thing as an elegant backpack 
or a new word I just recently learned in uh, Italian, Zaina. I didn't know about that. Um, so this girl was waiting around and I could tell like, she must be a non-rev. She's waiting around. And I saw her uh, goofing around on the app that only the employee people had. And I went up to her and I said, uh, hi, are you, you're flying non-rev like, like we are. And she's like, oh yeah. I said, um, there's only, there's only first in business on this flight right now. She goes, oh good. And I went, um, do you have clothes in your bag? And she says, yeah, why? I said, you should probably change. And she said, why would I do that? I said, because they're not going to let you on the flight if you're dressed, you're dressed like that. I mean, she was wearing really cutoffs, very, very revealing, you know, very just to the bottom of her derriere. And um, she goes, oh, no, they, they don't care about that anymore. And I said, maybe if we were going to Des Moines or Dallas, but this is an international flagship flight. So this is, you know, this is this is London. Believe me, they won't. She goes, you guys are crazy. And she just dismissed me. Two seconds later, uh, my niece and I, she was dressed extremely formally. I was wearing a suit and tie. They called our name. Boom, first class right in there. You know where she got left? At the gate. They didn't let her on. They had no seats. And they told her that she was dressed too provocatively. And instead of immediately running to the ladies and changing her clothes, what did she do? She put up a big stink. And that's one thing you're not supposed to do when you're privileged, when you're getting something, you know, that's part of a, a an actual privilege, like the definition of the word privilege. Uh, and she decided to have a, a, a wobbly with them, which was ridiculous. Monaco is a sovereign country. Uh, nobody's debating that. But it's in the south of France. <laughs> it's not France, but it is a sovereign company. But I do believe that they do get a lot of money subsidies from France, though. Am I wrong? John Doe is going to tell me right now. Monaco gets its money from taxes on products, VAT, VATs, property taxes, the casino, massive tourism, hotel tax, F1 race, marine fees for yachts. Only 35,000 people live there. Really small place. Yeah, it's, you could walk the whole length of it. I love I love to do those pro walk tours. You've ever seen those? I watch them, you know, cities I've never been. So actually, like whenever I get to them, I'm like, oh, well, I feel like I've been here before. Oh, so that's interesting. Gets his money from taxes, the casino. I guess that's true. What a smart thing to do. Their kind of gambling there, though, is a whole lot different than what we have here, which is called Aqueduct, <laughs> which is a racetrack. And now that everybody's got this gambling on the phones thing, which is a, a pandemic of its own, uh, I'm, I'm, how many people is that going to bankrupt? I don't. I don't think you should make gambling that accessible to people. People used to have to seek out Las Vegas and Atlantic City to ruin their lives or the racetrack. And now people can just do it while they're sitting in their own home. That really sucks. Hey, John Doe also says he's in Budapest, one of my sister's favorite cities. Two-hour drive from Vienna, magnificent and a bit more down-to-earth and affordable. Um, yeah, you have some beautiful product, like the chain bridge, all that great stuff. And also, I told you my friend J.S., who played drums for my band, uh, his beautiful wife is from Budapest. And she's one of the most beautiful people inside and out that I've ever seen, ever. Um, you can only become a citizen if passed by Prince Albert. Is that true? Like you have to apply and then I heard it's very hard. I know that the members, a lot of the members of the band, the Scorpions, live there. Interesting. Canaires here. Hey, Dirk, did somebody say giveaway? Somebody did. And it's this beautiful. We're giving away another Mirage pouch. This one in beautiful, lustrous black with the black on black, not the gray this time. This is the black on black Alcantara. Think about your beautiful watch inside this watch pouch. This is mine. So you don't get that one, but you get a brand new one and it's got the dust bag in it. So I haven't, this one's not been opened. So it's got a little paper and all that stuff in it. So this one's going to be yours. And all you have to do is be a subscriber. But don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, you're not going to win. Because I'm just going to go to the next guy. I have to make rules like that. Because, you know, a lot of people beg for subscribers. And hit that bell to get notified for every single video. You guys know my schedule. I'm here Tuesdays, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And then on Fridays, I'm here with the big guy. And we do the big classic show after he does who needs a drink, but like, and subscribe and hit that bell because, uh, you'll win this beautiful mirage. And it comes with this. And by the way, I use this every freaking day of my life it comes with this beautiful, uh, dust cloth that I use. I use 
all day long. I polish my glasses, my watches. I love this. I now have two of them because I have the green one. I've only kept, you know, they gave me a bunch of these. And uh, as a thank you, because I happened to mention on the show, I am not in any way, shape or form uh, compensated by this company. Uh, I will just say the following. I made a statement how much I was madly in love with my Mirage box and they apparently heard it. And then they also heard from one of my beautiful, gorgeous and talented bastards. And they said, uh, Dirk was promoting. You should use him as a spokesperson. Well, they sent me this beautiful box. And uh, at some point I have that, that six watch roll. That will be like a summer giveaway because that thing, because I, I don't want, I don't have six watches. And for somebody who does have a really big collection, it's beautiful. It's saddle. It's great. And we'll be giving that away too. Why not? Vaughn says, Monaco relies heavily on the tourism industry to generate revenue. It also tra- oh, there you go. You guys know everything. 33.33% tax on corporations with profits exceeding 25% from offshore sources. Jesus Christ. Wow. The top one, well, John Joel says, the top 1% in Monaco, yeah, in the world, you need to be worth $12 million to be in the 1% in Monaco. Okay. Well, that's doable, right? <laughs> Ray Ray says that to Cove Cork, where Titanic set... To see, uh, now I went to the Titanic Museum that they have there. It's really great. Angela went to La Scala. Uh, oh, La Scala's on his list. It was, on, you know what? It, this must be the case, Angelo. I have been to Milan so many times, and every single time I'm there, it's closed for something. One time it had scaffold. La, La Scafola. La Scala had scaffolding in front of it. Then it was closed for uh, a renovation. Every single time. I've never been step foot in that. Never, never, never been there. Never, never seen it. DK Lord says he wants it. DK, D-R-L-K Lord. That's a very difficult name, sir. It's a mirage. Yeah, it is. My green one is a mirage because it's green. <laughs> anything green like i'm the only guy in the world that world that has a mill gauss without the green crystal it's there you just can't see it hey lord h hey. good to see you lord h Saya. did you get a haircut in sevilla no i got uh, i got a haircut in long island city that's one of my oldest bucket list items ever since i was a kid watching little rascals um which is oh right <laughs> the barber of seville you're so funny lord h ladies and gentlemen who's gonna win the mirage tonight uh i uh, paul's been to the azor the azores i have not been there i would love to go there Let's see am i missing anybody here oh i got a 20 dollars steve moreno look at that Holy crap. Hey, one of my favorite, uh, favorite names, the soft toy Terracore. Eli Cathedral, Cambridgeshire in the UK is stunning. Dirk, wishing everyone the best regards Mar more. Mark, hey, thanks so much, man. And for that, we're going to give you... Thank you so much for that. That's really lovely. And Steve Moreno with 20 balloons paying it forward. I don't think I'll be able to join tomorrow. Oh, Steve, tomorrow's the big, the, the, the 6, 6 p.m. with the big guy. That's $20, man. You get the. That might actually be coming our way soon. Thank you so much for the twenty dollars super chat, super chat, super chat, soup, soup, super chat, super chat, super chat, super chat. Archie Luxury is like, give me super chats, give me super chats. I haven't watched his show in a thousand years. I mean, I have to admit that the first show I ever started watching was his show, the first watch show ever, and I watched it for quite a while, and I really enjoyed the content. Um, go every driver, keep driving on down the road, Turkania. Bang! What do you get for that? You get a bong. Thank you so much for that. I never get to use the big explosions, and so rarely do I ever get to get to do Leonard Bernstein. It happens occasionally. Usually happens on Friday. So go every driver, keep driving on down the road. I think it's time for everybody's favorite segment, which is gonna be 
the Bastards Gallery. The Bastards Gallery. Bastards Gallery. Wow, 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 wow. Let's start out with a vintage Omega from Richard. And it is beautiful. That looks like a bumper movement to me there. Look at that. I love these. I love these old three-handers. Beautiful. I just don't think you can touch these. There were so many models to be to, to, to be had back in the day. What is this about? I'm going to say 48, 1950-ish. That's what it looks like to me. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that, Richard. Did you say what it is? Let me see what you said. Tell me what you said. No subject. It's just a picture. Hey, guys, if you send vintage anything or stuff like that, it could be cars, you know, anything that you send, please, if you can, because like, you know I know a lot about Omegas, but when it comes to all those vintage ones, I know a lot of them, but that I don't know, and I would love to know what that is. I especially want to know what the movement is in that because those movements were absolutely beautiful. Uh, I'm assuming that Andrew sent me a movie. It's not playing. I will have to download that at some point from Dean. Dean's going to send us some pictures of his garden. Let's see how it, how does your garden grow? I'll blow it up. So as far as I could go, how did this get shot? One moment, please. Uh, that won't let me blow that up any more than that's beautiful though. You have quite a bit of land there. These are very small pictures, kiddo. Did you send me bigger ones? Hold on a second. You might have. Because you sent me these pictures three times in a row. They're all small. I'm checking them out. They're all small. Okay, so let's go to the first one. Beautiful. I, I can't blow it up any higher than that. As much as I'm trying my scroll wheel, I'm trying everything. I'm trying. To, oh, oh, I can. I got it. Okay. Where there's a will, there's a way. MFers. Bastards. Wow. Are you a master gardener? Tell you, I'm friends with the master gardener. My friend Mike is a uh, master gardener. He does all the Upper East Side fancy, oh, Upper West Side, I should say. You know, like the Century and the Dakota and uh, San Remo, all those famous places where like Bono and people like that live. These, this is beautiful work, man. Wow, and it's work indeed. Oof. Wow. What do you call that? Is that like a, is that a like a water tank? That's beautiful, man. Very cool. I love the look of that thing. Wow. Thursday Gardens. This is from EC. Oh, wow. Explorer 2 on the wrist. Looking great. Perfect size. I see a little bit of loom there. There's a little bit of a loom shot, some money shot. Beautiful. Beautiful, cause you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Oh, I'm not. Am I not sharing it? How does that? That happens every once in a while. I click on it and it doesn't work. Here's the Rolex Explorer Two, the perfect size. Absolutely gorgeous. People are crazy about this watch. Absolutely crazy. Is that the only one you sent me? It is. Sometimes I can hit the. I can't always tell if there's two in a row because Gmail is weird to me. Ray, 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 this picture is very dark. I've got to get you some Photoshop, some photo skills to lighten you up. I don't know what you're wearing there. Is it a boulevard? Is it a boulevard, monsieur? And is that who's going on there? Oh, look at that. I, Calypso, I sing to your spirit, the men who have served you so long and so well. Olé, dee, 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 olé. That's for you, Carolyn. <laughs> That's very interesting. I don't know what that is, Ray Ray. What is that? Does anybody know what that is? Because I don't know. Oh, here's a better picture. There's one with the flash and one without. He gave me the choice. But it's basically the same picture, right? Is that a World Series ring you got on there? A Super Bowl ring? It's a big ring. It's a very big ring, Ray Ray. Melly C. Always fun to see her watches 
and her kitty cats. And a beautiful helmet. And this is the khaki. I love the khaki. I think everybody on the channel loves the khaki because we've had it featured here before. It looks great on you. What a beautiful watch. And I love the vintage Hamiltons. My sister and I have a mutual friend who collects vintage Hamiltons. You know that, Carrie. And you know who I'm talking about. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. I love the knurling on this. And I love the crown. We were I was talking to somebody today uh, about Tudor. That's a, that's a nice... As far as Tudors go... I mean, I have to say a lot of tutors look the same to me, but this one stands out. A lot of them do. That's beautiful. Is that blue? Is that navy? It's great. Oh, that's what I came for. Oh, devil eyes. Devil eyes. I see the devil eyes. When the devil eyes happen, look out. Got to be very careful. Steve Moreno, wrist check. With his Longines. There's nowhere near enough Longines on this channel. First of all, the craftsmanship on these watches is par excellence. Longines got one of the most beautiful histories in all of watchdom, and they don't get half the credit that they deserve. Look at the lugs on that thing. That is amazing. This is a very beautiful watch. I love Longines. Is there more than one? I want more. I want more. I'm greedy. Give me more. I love looking at the Longines. Oh, this is from, who is this from? From Brian. Oh, this is a great shot. <laughs> I miss getting, I don't have any scars on my hands anymore. I love this. It's beautiful. I can't see what kind of watch that is. It's very cool, though. But your cat is way cooler. What beautiful markings. That is one beautiful, beautiful kitty, Brian. Wow. And it's a great shot. I love the sunshine. They, they're, You went and you attacked them there. Because, look, I could tell that your cat was lounging in the sun rays, as they do. Because they love the sun rays. What watch is that? It's quite beautiful. Looks like a proper tool watch. I can't name it off the top of my head. Angelo Minichello. What is this thing? I love when you show me stuff. I have no idea what this is. This is, uh, what is this? Wow. Oh, it's an Armand. Look at that. Oh, man. Very interesting. Look at that interesting piece. Wow. Wow. See, they're not everybody doesn't wear the same stuff on bashers. Everybody wears very interesting. This is a very interesting concept. I like the whole idea of that movement, doesn't even look like it makes sense to me. But wow. Very amazing. It's like modern art. Thank you, Angelo Minichello. Mr. Minichello. It's Brett. Brett with a Rolex. <laughs> he always stages his pictures this way, which is great. Put a little loom, put a little loom on your sea dweller. Sea dweller. It is. It is the. It is the watch for the larger man. That's a big watch. I mean, listen, it's a big sub. It's a big beefy sub. I couldn't. I couldn't pull that off because I could wear a forty-two max on my four point two five inch wrist. My seven point two five inch wrist. I mean, I have a decent sized wrist, but like that's 40 and that looks great. 42 is just the top of my range. I couldn't pull that off, but I bet you can. That's beautiful. And I love the loom shots. Who doesn't love the money shots? I love it. I love the money, the money shots on the luminous Rolex. Oh, yeah. This is from just Martin. Oh, a union. Wow. Look at this thing. This is cooler than shit. Wow. Oh, man. That is... Dude, I would wear that tomorrow. Look at that. Man. The Germans never fail to impress me. Look at that moon phase. Look at that. Look at the complications going on here, kiddo. That is beautiful. 
I need to know more. I, could you send me an email about what model that is, what year it is? Give me a little intel on that, if you will, just Martin. Or did you already? It's the Union Glashuta Perpetual Calendar Swatch, pre-Swatch group. Oh, because, yeah, because they own it now. Ah, Carlos is here. Carlos, hello. Welcome to the Bastards today, Carlos, with his Accutron. Listen, man, this is back in the day when, like, when it was so real. Look at that. I love that dial. And I love the distortion, too. Obviously, Plexi, right? Because there's distortion. Accutron. Look at this. Oh, that's great, man. But there's a nice reflection on that. Maybe that isn't maybe that isn't Hesselite. Thermoplastic. Because I see a very good reflection on that. Beautiful, Carlos. Thank you so much. I love the nightlife. I love to boogie. Lord H. <laughs> Lord H. Oh, yeah. Look at that beauty. Stretching out. That looks that carpet looks like raffia. That looks like the perfect cat carpet where they could go bananas on it. You're beautiful. What a beautiful baby. Is just one shot? I want more shots of the kitty cats. That's beautiful. Hey, we got one from Walt. Very first time on the show. Unless I know your screen name and it's different than your email. So there you go. And vintage Rolex on the wrist. Look at that. I know I was going to say I know what that is. Wow. Yeah, man, I love I love the pre-ceramic subs. I really do. I really and truly do. Pre-super case. I just think they're sexier. Way sexier. Looks great. Perfect fit. Look at that. Great angle. Oh, that's in perfect shape, man. I don't see anything going on there. Wow. Yeah, one day I'll get a sub. One one of these days. I mean, I think every man should probably have a sub, right? Wouldn't that probably be the smart move? Uh, too small for you? Let's boot that back up. Well, no, I don't think too so. small. No way. Hold on, let's go right back up. That's what it said in the message. Do you think this is too small for him? No way. No, no way. No, not at all. Not at all. Believe me, I'm not afraid to tell people when their watches don't fit. I'm the first guy to go, hey. Because generally people wear watches that are too big for them. That's generally the way it is. And the way, you know, listen, there's a way you could do it. Like, uh, I think the average man's wrist is something like six and a half to 6.75 or whatever. So, like, the, you know, the way you can, first of all, you'll know the way it looks. If you don't have any space here and space here, you know, like I have two lugs on both sides. So just about if you put it flat. But I have a, I have a pretty, I don't know what the word is, but it's like a, I don't have a very flat wrist. So most of the meat is this, this way as opposed to this way. And um, I've seen some people that look like they're wearing clocks and that just doesn't look so good. You know, and I have a 7.25 inch wrist, but like I said, it's mostly depth, not width. Look at this. This is the lady tutor, the lady sub. How about this? Oof. Could that look any more beautiful? Look at that. I love, here's what I love about this watch. Look at the size of the crown. It's, it's an oversized crown. I love oversized crown. I, I hate small crowns. Hate them, hate them, hate them. And Omega does that too. I think Omega needs to beef up their crown action. Of course, on the Speedmaster Professional, it's a very large crown. But for the most part, you know, those new conical crowns, the ones that they have the cupcakes, reverse cupcakes on the Aqua Terrace, they need to, that needs to go immediately. This is absolutely beautiful. That is great. Oh, that bracelet is amazing, too. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Jade Pine. I have a super chat, super chat, soup, soup, super chat. 
Super chat from Angelo Minichello. Notice arrived today. Delivery coming up. Unboxing pending. It's a surprise. You want to do it on the show? You want to send me? Listen. It's up to you. Basherdirk at gmail.com. You know my address. Uh, you want to come on the show, Angelo, and do an unboxing? You tell me if you want to do it. Send me an email. You don't have to tell everybody out loud. Um, but if you want to do it, um, hey, man, my show's your show. If you want to do a big unboxing on, on my show, uh, let's do it. I'd be happy to do that. I would absolutely be happy to do that. For you, anything, my brother. Because you're a Patreon. And speaking of Patreons, these are the beautiful Patreon pantheon. Jim Lassick, Andrew Wolkovich, Go Moda Soto, and the Nick Sisto. Complicated time for a girl, McDermott, Nathaniel Hannon, Dana O'Malley, Lord Scotty H. Dean McKenzie and Al Benedetti and Angelo Minichello and the Gas Man 308. Thank you very much for being my Patreons. Thank you so much. Uh, what did I miss while I was looking at everybody's watches? Don't forget to send me your shots to basherdirk at gmail.com and I will. You share with me, I share you with the world. Um, let's see. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, Carrie said Monte Carlo. So, yeah, she was smart. But uh, see, I missed all these things. I just want to make sure I have everything in before I give away this beautiful Mirage watch roll made out of premium leather and Alcantara. It's going to make your watch look even sexier than it already is. Um, yeah. Steve Moreno. Oh, it's Jim Lassick. Hi, Dirk and friends. Having to catch the shows lately after hours. Hoping everybody's having an awesome day. Go Cubbies. Go Cubbies. Even though I'm a Met fan. But you know what? Go Cubbies. Because Jim said so. $4.99. Thank you, Jim Lassick, so much for that. Okay, so I'm going to get all of the chats out of the way before, 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 before I give it away. Okay, I just want to make sure that everybody's gotten everything out of their system beforehand. Dave Fahrenheit 451 says, Tudor is the co cooler, younger brother of Alex. Certainly the most affordable. It comes from the same DNA, you know? So that's good. Scotty Lord H also says, Go Cubbies. He's a Cubbies fan too. Uh, hey, Angela says, I've never done something like that, but sure, why not? I, all you need is a phone, and uh, and I'll give you the link. You tell me what day you want to do it. You pick it. And Angelo Minichello will be my special guest, and he'll do an unboxing on the show. Hey, you know what? Anything for you, pal. I I don't do unboxings on my show. I mean, I got my Milgauss surprised upon me that day, which was crazy, you know? And uh, Steve Moreno says he'd love to add a Lang and Zona to who wouldn't, you know, all, my only problem with them is they're so deep. They're so, they're so freaking. they're hockey pucks. They're, I know it's art and I know they're beautiful and yes, yes, yes. And I had one in my hand, that guy uh, that I met that invented Google maps when I was with Dane at the hotel, he had a long, uh, one and I, it was, but it was so thick. It was really crazy thick, you know, I don't know. It was crazy. So, okay. What are we going to do about this, guys? So we're going to give away this Mirage box. And we're going to give it away now. So here's how we're going to do it. You have to be a subscriber. That's it. I'll, I can see in the subscriber list whether or not you are or you're not. And um, please like and subscribe. And then I'm going to ask you a question in a minute about something I talked about earlier. And if you can remember it. And you could spill it first. Um, there you go. So are you ready? So I went to uh, Seville. I visited Seville when I was visiting my friend Mary. Can you tell me what year it was? And that's it. It's an easy question. What year did I visit my friend Mary? I'm waiting. I've been waiting for an answer like you. She's 90 now. Des Farrell wins. <clears throat> Where is it? 
Where is it? I just saw it. Des Des Verga. Des was first, right? Okay. Okay. Des, you're the winner. 1999. 1999. Bam, 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 bam. Very close was I would have given you for that. Uh Dave. Ray Ray almost. Nathaniel got it. Del Boy got it. Scotty H got it. Hitesh got it. Uh yeah. All right. So that's it. You're the winner. Des. Des Farrell got it. So, Des, you know what you got to do, right? You've got to send me an email at bashdirk at gmail.com. This is yours, pal, because I know you're a subscriber. I don't even have to check for Des, right? You do subscribe, don't you? I know you do. Uh, send me your email and I'll ship it out tomorrow morning. Because that's the bashers, my friends. That's I'm Dirk. You guys are all the fucking bastards. And this is our show, man. This is our show. This is why we're here. I want to thank Andrew and Nathaniel and Dean and Soft Toy, Soft Toy Terra Corp. Best name for a band. Steve Moreno, Heavy Driver, Jim Lassick, Angelo Minichello for the Super Chats. Listen, Super Chat, Super Chat, Super Chat. Listen, it's paying my bills. And you know what? Thank you so much because this is my job now. This is what I do. I'm not going back behind the bar. No way, no how. Don't want to. Want to be on the show every day. Want to be here for you. Want to do the bastards. Want to be a bastard. I'm a bastard. You're a bastard. Wouldn't you like to be a bastard too? Bow, bow. And that's the story, kiddos. That's the show for today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Um, Chris P says, real quick, have you seen the new Omega Speedmaster Chronoscope Paris 2024? I saw a picture of it this morning. Holy shit. Oh, my God. I want one so bad. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes. Mr. Bad. Mr. Mean One. Mr. Bad Gas. Nice work, Des. Des had his finger on the button. Great. Great, great, great. Great work, Des. Very. <laughs> he goes, Bastardo. <laughs> That's the show, guys and girls. Thank you so much for being here tonight on Giveaway Thursdays. I'll be back tomorrow with the big guy uh, for Classic Bashers at 6 p.m. I'll be back for Sunday Mass, as usual, 3 p.m. on Sunday. And I'll be back, hopefully, with Watch Fashion Police. I think we should be back by then with the lovely uh, Michaela de Chation and Oshin O'Malley. And then back uh, for Dirk Weekdays, Tuesday through Thursday at 5 o'clock. Del Boy says, Slancha all, Slancha to you guys. Remember, always say please and thank you. Remember to hold the door open. And always remember, remember this. That when you're dealing with somebody who's a little irate, they might be having a bad day, not having the same quite a, 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 as good a day as you are. Give them the benefit of the doubt because you never know what's going on in their lives. Something terrible could have happened or else they're just a total mean person and you've decided that they're a total cunt. <laughs>